Today we're going to talk about the golden rule of claw hammer banjo. This has to do with your striking hand only, so we're not even going to be thinking about our fretting hand. Today we're just going to talk about what's going on with the right hand and how to get your technique excellent so that you don't have to think about the right hand anymore and you can focus on the bigger stuff like left hand work and expressing yourself in a tune. So I see the golden rule of claw hammer as a two part rule. In fact, I like to think of it, since I'm big on analogies, I like to think of it as a coin and every coin has a heads and a tails. So I'm going to share the heads and the tails of this golden rule with you and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about how it works in practice. Now, heads of the golden rule of claw hammer banjo is that every time I throw my hand down into the banjo for a downstroke, my thumb comes into contact with a string simultaneous to that downstroke. I'm just going to repeat that. I throw my hand down into the banjo, the thumb impacts and connects with a string simultaneous to that downstroke. It happens at the exact same time. So for example, check this out. Watch the thumb connect with that fifth string simultaneous to the downstroke. So let's talk about tails. Every time I do an upstroke, my thumb travels with my hand, regardless of whether I'm sounding the thumb string or not. So for example, let's take a look at this double thumbing pattern. My hand leaves the banjo and that makes sense, right? Because I'm sounding the fifth string on every upbeat. But what if we have a different pattern? What if we have a compound pattern like the famous bum ditty where I'm only sounding the fifth string after every other downstroke? Well, check this out. Let me play a bum ditty pattern for you and watch that the mechanics stay the same. So even though I'm not sounding that fifth string after the first downstroke, I'm still leaving the banjo with my thumb. The thumb does not stay in place. It travels on the upstroke with the hand. Okay, so now you've got the golden rule of claw hammer banjo. I'm going to just sum it up real quick. The first part of the rule is that every time you throw your hand down into the banjo, your thumb contacts a string simultaneous to the downstroke. This can be any string. It could be the fifth string, like in a normal double thumbing pattern, or it could be something like a drop thumb, where we are dropping the thumb down to an inner string, I'm still connecting with that inner string simultaneous to the downstroke. Now, flip side of that coin. Rule number two within the golden rule is that every time my hand leaves the banjo, my thumb comes with my hand regardless of whether it is sounding the string that it was previously on or not. It's a lot to keep in mind, but I want you to prove it to yourself with some simple patterns. The first pattern that you can use to prove this truth of claw hammer banjo to yourself with is of course the double thumbing pattern. You throw your hand into the banjo, the thumb goes with you. And it's easy. You come back out of the banjo and your thumb is sounding that fifth string on the upstroke. The hand works together as a unit. You're not separating the thumb and the striking motion. Think of a hammer. The hammer always stays in the same shape. A claw hammer never changes shape. It's always the head goes with the hammer and so does the claw part. It's all of one piece. And I want you to think about your striking hand as that same kind of thing. It's this monolithic device that you're throwing into the instrument and coming back out of the instrument with. Okay, now let's talk about some funny things that happen with the fist string and the thumb when we're doing a pattern like a bum ditty. So, what you need to avoid, and we just talked about this on, on Patreon, you need to avoid lateral, big lateral mo motions because I see any lateral motions as a compound motion. It's something that's going to slow you down and it's kind of inaccurate and messy. Now, there are caveats, of course, the brush stroke is a big one and we can talk about that later, but let's just think about a linear style, one note at a time, double thumbing patterns. So, if I'm doing a bum ditty, 
I want to avoid lateral motions at all costs. I'm using this very percussive knocking motion, pivoting on the fulcrum and using a little bit of wrist energy to deliver my stroke into the banjo and then to pull the stroke out of the banjo. Now this bum ditty, what's going on with this? No lateral motion, right? So I throw my hand down into the banjo on the first stroke. I don't engage that fist string. I connect with it, but I don't put energy down into it by squeezing. I just let my thumb rest on it, and then I come out on the upstroke without sounding it. Now, we go on to the second half of that pattern. I engage that fist string this time. Right before that fist string happens, on the downstroke, I'm putting a little input with my thumb, little energy, by squeezing a little bit into that fist string. You can see the fist string is bending under the weight of my engagement. I activate the fist string, and then I don't move laterally, I come straight out of the instrument. Again, engage, out, engage, out. This happens fast when I'm playing up to speed. Faster. It's that engagement of the thumb that creates the force that is necessary to grab that string and pull it straight out of the instrument. What I see all the time is people trying to get that thumb to sound by moving laterally, either down, or I see this a lot too, up which you can see how that puts my hand out of the path, out of the axis of attack that I'm working with. I'm always trying to maintain a straight into the banjo and out of the banjo stroke. I'm taking that knocking on the door analogy that we use all the time in claw hammer. I'm taking that very literally. I think of the banjo more as a drum than I do as a stringed instrument. And I'm treating it as such with my right hand, delivering my power straight into the instrument and then back out again straight. It's that thumb engagement where I'm activating that fist string that allows me to grab that fist string with the pad of my thumb and extract the tone on the upstroke. And it's this engagement or non-engagement that I'm using to control whether or not I'm sounding my thumb note on the upstroke. So I hope this clarifies some things for those of you who are struggling with basic mechanics of claw hammer. I get this kind of question all the time and it's one of the number one things I see people struggling with even later on in intermediate uh, areas of the instrument, I see people working through this difficulty. So let's complicate things by adding the left hand. One of the critical parts about adding the left hand is you've got to keep this golden rule of claw hammer in mind even when the left hand is in play. It's counterintuitive because you're going to want to do things with your right hand when the left hand is in play that don't fit within the claw hammer golden rule. So for example, what I see all the time is if somebody is trying to generate a hammer-on pattern, they will leave the thumb down, which is a no-no, right? It breaks the rule. Every time you come up off the instrument, the thumb has to leave the instrument regardless of whether or not your thumb is sounding the string that it was on. So in this case, I'm replacing the initial thumb stroke with a hammer-on. But my thumb is still coming off the instrument with my right hand when I perform that hammer-on, as if I were sounding that fist string. And then I go back down for the ditty. nice little check pattern would be to do something like this. Tap 
tab will be available for patrons over on Patreon. That's uh, several tempos through a very simple check pattern that allows you to check your hammer-on pattern, a hammer-on and a ditty, against a double thumbing pattern so that you can make sure that that right hand is adhering to that two-part golden rule that I talked about at the top of the lesson. All right, if you have comments or questions, please leave them below. We have a lot of exciting things coming up on Patreon. I'm about to start the June Apple module. I'm really, really excited about it. I will be profiling one of my very favorite players of all time, and I'm going to be sharing and tabbing out a rather obscure version of June Apple that many people haven't heard before, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to learn. So hop on over to Patreon if you wanna get in on that. There are lots of changes happening too. All of those details are over on Patreon. Some big stuff is coming down the pike, and I hope you guys join me for it. I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.